Let's look at an example problem here that exercises our new understanding of the one-dimensional problem. So what I want to look at is a bar that's fixed at one end and I'm pulling on it with a force F at the other end in the X direction. And the bar is made out of two materials, let's say material one and material two. So, And I'd like to ask the question of what is the change in length of the system when I apply the force F to it. So I'd like to find out what is delta, so UL minus U0. So it's a, it's a problem that we've dealt with before, but now we have this added complication that I have a composite system here, so it's made out of two materials. Now if I make a free body diagram, I make a cut anywhere along the length of the bar orthogonal to the x-axis, I'll find out that the internal force R is just equal to F. So free body diagram gives me that. Now I know that the internal force is actually the integral of the stress over the cross-section, so the integral of sigma dA, so if you want to be specific, that's sigma xx acting on the cross-section there. Now, we know an expression for the stress in terms of the stresses over the two pieces. In particular, I have sigma xx on part one and sigma xx on part two, and taken together, they're equal to the integral of the stress over the entire area. But the stresses themselves are related to the strain. So I can replace sigma xx by E1 times xx, so just to be particular. And sigma xx in part 2 is E2 epsilon xx. So E1 and E2 are the Young's modulus, moduli of materials 1 and 2. Uh, the strain is actually the same in both of these integrals because there's only one strain on the cross-section. And it's a constant over the cross-section, as are the moduli over each individual area. So I can pull the moduli and the strains out from underneath these integral signs. And if I do that, I find that the internal force, which equals F, is equal to A1E1 plus A2E2 times the strain, epsilon xx, in this system. So I can solve for the strain. So I can get the normal strain in the x direction. That's just the ratio of F to this combination of moduli and areas. So to get the, the relative change or the change in length of the bar, I integrate the strain from one end to the other, and so I find FL over A1E1 plus A2E2. So this gives me the final result for the change in length. There's one thing to note here is that the stress is not constant on the cross section here. So for example, if I assume that material 2 is stiffer than material 1, what I'll find is that the the stresses in the center of the bar are higher than those on in the annual region A1 there. So the strains are uniform on the cross section by the assumption that U only depends on X, but the stresses are not necessarily uniform. They would be uniform if E1 equals E2.